So you'll see these microphones everywhere. Um, they sell for about 20 bucks. Um, this one is the uh, BM700. This one is the BM800. I believe they're the same except for the ex external case. Um, so what I want to look at is the circuit that's inside these things. And you can go online and you can look for schematics and you'll find several different um, people who have drawn schematics. I don't like the way that they've drawn them because it, it doesn't lead to a good understanding of the circuit. It's certainly accurate, but it doesn't lead to a good understanding of the circuit. So I'm going to redraw it in a particular way. So let's take a look at this. This is the basics of the circuit. It's not everything that's on the PC board. It's, it's the basics. So the input uh, of the um, microphone is the capsule. And in all of these microphones, it's an electric capsule. So it doesn't require 60 volts or 70 volts. It, it, it's pre-charged. So it just has two pins. One pin is on ground and the other pin has a signal out. And, you, and that's, that's all you need to know. There's just two wires. And one of the wires gets connected to the gate of the uh, JFET transistor here. Now in other circuits, you'll see a resistor to ground on the gate for self-biasing and you'll find that missing on this particular schematic. And that's because they use a particular um, JFET. They use a 2SK596. And that particular JFET has a 25 mega ohm resistor built into it. So the, the self-biasing is built into the part. So you cannot substitute a, a, a different JFET and, and expect it to work. You, you, if you do put in a different uh, JFET, you have to supply your own gate transistor to ground. Now, out of the JFET, uh, the uh, signal goes through two capacitors, and I'll explain why there's two capacitors, but there's a one microfarad capacitor and another one microfarad capacitor. So the AC signal passes through those. The next stage is a PNP transistor. It's DC biased with two resistors. And the uh, collector and emitter uh, are tied to plus V and ground through 2.2K resistors each. So it's very symmetric. And the output is taken off of the collector and the emitter as a uh, basically it's it's a one transistor push pull. Um, as one signal goes up, the other signal goes down. So you have a, a differential signal coming out of this. Uh, so that differential signal goes through the, uh, a pair of one microfarad capacitors through 10K resistors, and those drive the output transistor. Uh, there's two output transistors um, on the positive side and the negative side. So the top of the circuit is the negative side. The bottom of the circuit is the positive side. So you can see this is configured not as a push-pull totem like you might see in an op amp. It's just an emitter follower. It just sends the signal through. So the output is buffered with a 47 ohm resistor and wired to the XLR connector. Pin one is ground, pin two is plus, pin three is minus. All right, let's see why there was two capacitors on the, uh, on the input side. And that's because I left off one resistor on my first schematic because I thought it was confusing. And it is confusing. It's a very strange resistor. It's a strange place to put it, and it does strange things to the circuit. So we'll go over to a SPICE simulation, and I'll show you uh, what that actually does to the circuit and why it was put in. So I've created a SPICE model for the, uh, the stage that we're interested in, the uh, PNP transistor with the weird feedback of the 2.7K resistor. So nothing really matters on the left and nothing really matters on the right. It's kind of like what this part of the circuit is doing with that uh, 2.7K resistor. So here it is modeled the way it's being used with the 2.7K value in there. So you can see that the uh, uh, input signal is in blue and the, um, no, I'm sorry, the input signal is in red and the output is in blue. So this the circuit actually attenuates the signal by quite a bit, almost by, uh, um, by 10. Uh, so it makes you wonder why, why kill the signal that, all that much. And if we go over to the AC analysis, um, we can see that the circuit is very flat um, to about uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 hertz. So from 40 hertz 
and up. Uh, the circuit looks like it's doing a, a really good job. There is a kind of a phase change uh, below 100, 100 hertz, um, so that may be worrisome, but otherwise the uh, circuit looks really flat. Okay, what I've done here is I've increased the value of that resistor to um, something ridiculously high, 1e e to the 9. Um, and so it basically removes that resistor from the circuit. It's just not there electrically. Um, instead of removing lines and deleting things, as if I just created a super high value, it's almost like, you know, the conductance of air. <laughs> And uh, you can see that the um, response of the circuit changes a lot. Um, it's still flat, but it starts to roll off around two, three hundred hertz. Um, so this is may this may be what they really were worried about. Um, but even at the three dB point, we're still going down to maybe sixty hertz or something. So I don't know if it's all that bad. I would be really curious to remove that resistor from a microphone and see if things didn't get a whole lot better. Uh, maybe you would lose some bass, but I doubt that it would be much and maybe it would make some people's voices sound better. It certainly would be a lot louder. The microphone will go up in volume. So let's go back to the 2.7K resistor. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to allow the spice simulation to vary a value. What I'm worried about is any tolerance variation. So if we vary the, uh, the resistor, say plus or minus 10%, uh, what does that do to the circuit? And uh, this is what it does. Uh, it's quite striking. Um, so that 2.7K value is quite critical and really needs to be a 1% resistor or better. Um, and it really does strange things to the circuit. Um, that value is going to affect things and that capacitor uh, C2 is also going to affect things. So let's, let's change C2 plus or minus 10% as well. And you can see that uh, changing C2 uh, does affect uh, the circuit a little bit, not as much as the resistor, but it does affect the, re the, uh, the circuit as well. And now if we let the spice simulation vary both at the same time, you can kind of see the overall changes to the circuit uh, having the two values uh, change by 10%. Um, so I, I really don't like that resistor. Um, I think it could get, get you in trouble. Um, it might be a nice place to put a potentiometer uh, to adjust that to make, uh, make a particular microphone sound a particular way. So the final part of the schematic that I want to draw in is the uh, power supply section. Remember that the microphone requires phantom power. So pins two and three will be connected to a preamplifier that supplies phantom power. Phantom power is by definition uh, 47, 48 volts um, tied through a 6.K resistor. So you can imagine on pin 3, there's a 6.K resistor to 48 volts. And on pin 2, there's a 6.8K resistor to 48 volts. So those voltages come into the microphone. Now, since it's a positive voltage on both pins 2 and 3, it will pass through these PNP transistors. It will go through the emitter, through the base, and then each of the bases see 150, ohm, 150K ohms. So that 48 volts will go through those 150K resistors to a common node. And then those will go down to a 47 microfarad capacitor to be buffered. And then there's a secondary buffer, a 22K resistor and a 2.2, I mean a 22 microfarad capacitor. And then that voltage that comes in, this 48 volt phantom voltage, gets clamped to 9.1 volts with a Zener diode. So you start out with 48, it gets clamped down to 9.1 volts. And then the uh, Zener diode is buffered with an emitter follower, and that NPN transistor then passes that 9.1 volts minus a VBE drop, uh, a one diode drop, and creates the plus V. And then that plus V goes to the rest of the circuit.